What is going on guys, Real Touch Gmail here back with another Java game programming tutorial. And today what we're going to be doing is finishing up our animations and actually setting the game up so we can create an actual game out of it. So we'll go ahead and run the game now. As you can see, uh, you know, we have the game running and you know, we've got a cool little level and everything. But first off, if we go backwards, our player is like walking backwards, which is kind of weird. And uh, so, so we're going to make a fix to that which basically means we're going to take our sprite sheet and uh, and load up these images here looking left and also our jumping animation right here. All right. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into the textures class here and we're going to have to load up all of those. Uh, let me open it up again. All of these textures right here on the right. So. To do that, what we're basically going to do is let's go ahead and count how many we need. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to need to duplicate this. So now we're going to need 14 player buffered images. Should make sense. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Paste it down here. And then I'm just going to add a comment to myself. Uh, looking left and up here looking right. So here I'm just going to switch the numbers up. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So now what we need to do is we just really need to uh, count here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is going to be column 20. And really all we need to do now is just kind of work back from there. So 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, and 14. Now, obviously your player sprite sheet, unless you have duplicated this, uh, yours is going to be different. I mean, yours can be like here and then right below it, which means you just need to go down a row. Uh, so yours is definitely going to be different. Don't take these values for what they are look at the logical standpoint at which you are you know actually creating so so yeah and then we need the jumping animation so these are six images right here so let's go ahead and let's just actually create another buffered image for that buffered image array this is going to be called player jump it's new buffered image six And down here we're going to say player jump zero equals ps dot grab image. So this is going to be column eight, row two, thirty-two by sixty-four. This is player jump. So we'll copy this, paste it a couple more times. Change this to one. Oops. There we go. And we just really need to change this. So nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So there we go. So now that we've got it all loaded, actually let's let's kind of let's start the game here. Okay, so everything is loading properly still, so that's a good sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into the player class here. And what I'm going to create is a variable called facing. And it's going to equal one. And basically what this, do, what this does is one equals right and negative one equals left. So if we're facing left, our facing is going to be negative one, which means that we are to uh, run the player walking left animation. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's create another animation player walk left and then go ahead and copy this in our constructor and initialize a new oops, a new animation player walk left and we're just going to change this to 7 8 9 10 
Oops. 11, 12. And inside here, we'll say player walk left dot run animation. And now inside of our render method, what we're going to say is if velocity x does not equal zero, then what we're going to do is actually let's set this up in brackets and say if facing equals one, then we're going to draw this. And you can also make a switch statement for this, but I'm just going to do uh, an FL statement. Else, which means it equals negative one, we're going to draw the left animation. And now to change whether we are, are facing is left or right, in our tick method, we can say if velocity x is less than zero, facing equals one. Else, if velocity x is greater than zero, facing equals one. This will actually be negative one. So we run the game now. As you can see, well, it works. But actually, well, <laughs> this doesn't quite work because we need to, uh, when we go left, it needs to like face left, the, uh, the idle animation there. So actually what we did here was seven. All right, this needs, these all need to go up one. 10, 11, 12, 13. And then we can do the same thing for in our else. If facing equals one, do that, copy it, else negative one, we're going to draw seven. Let's run it again. Yep, so there we go. So now it works. So now we actually have uh, a game where it it swaps the uh, it swaps the uh, the direction that they're looking, which is actually a lot better and now feels more like a platformer in two directions rather than primarily going in one direction. So let's go ahead and do the jumping now. Actually, I, I thought about it more, and I think that if I went ahead and used the animation, it would look a little a bit odd. So I'm just going to use this this frame here. So inside here, we already have a jumping variable, I believe. Uh, let's go into our key input here because I'm not actually sure. Yes. So we do have a jumping variable. So now what we basically need to do is just override all of this. So if jumping else, I'll pop this in here. So if jumping, we're just going to do the same thing. If facing equals one, g dot draw image text underscore player jump, and this is going to be to int x int y 4896 null copy that paste it again else if facing equals negative one this is going to be three so we're going to run the game now as you can see, we jump, and we get that jumping frame in both directions now, which is pretty cool. So now we have we have put some uh, some production value into the game now. So we've got some nice uh, jumping animations, and you know we, we can walk back and forth. So next tutorial, what we're going to go ahead and do is look at possibly adding a shooting mechanic. And then what we're going to do is going into level design and actually creating enemies and that fun stuff. So this was a little bit of a boring tutorial. Uh, not really necessary because you might be making a totally opposite game and uh, won't even need you know, uh, 
animations like this. So let me like, go and subscribe. Let's try for 50 likes this time. And uh, again, so this is kind of like more of an ideal sort of tutorial. Like you're not going to follow this code by code because, uh, you know, obviously your game will be different. So I hope, I hope you learned something from it. And uh, I will see you guys next tutorial. Peace.